now that we've recognised that we can actually say something about the distribution of the variability, um, we can return to our spreadsheet of the student heights, um, where previously we've calculated a measure of variability that is appropriate to the data set in that it, it doesn't use just two points from the data set, which is what you get if you just use the range, it does use the whole data set. So logically, in first principles, we derived a measure of variability by measuring the difference between each member of the data set and the mean of the data set. But because now we've established that the, the variability that we like to see, if it's wholly controlled by random factors, will fit uh, a normal distribution um, and the parameter of the normal distribution that controls its shape um, which controls the, the spread of the normal distribution or the variability is actually the standard deviation um, then we can uh, derive the standard deviation for our data set so we can do that by First of all, instead of measuring the difference between each member of the data set and the average, which we've got here in the, the diffs column, which we've done already, um, we can just square the difference between each member of the data set and the average. The easiest way to do that is to just enter equals so the difference, and then we can square it. So I raise it to the power of 2, enter that and then we can copy that down through the whole column. The easiest way to do that is just to double click on the corner and that's copied that down. Then we need to then have the sum of the squared differences rather than the sum of the differences. So the sum and column is F, F4, so F5 over 3. We need to put an equal sign in front of it. And there we get the sum of the square differences. Um, then we have the standard deviation. Um, in this cell, we want you to actually calculate the standard deviation. And in this cell, you can use the Excel function to give you the standard deviation. Uh, the standard deviation, in order to calculate it, we have the sum of the square differences. So we need to refer to that cell. So we take the sum of the square differences. And first of all, we need to standardize it, which means to take out the sample size. That means we need to divide it by the sample size. So we know there's 500 in the sample. So we'll enter 500. Um, and we'll put brackets around that because the final thing we need to do is to take the square root of that because we've done the sum of the square differences. So the square root raised to the power of 0.5. Now, enter that, and we get a value of 11.532. Um, however, we need to consider, actually, this is standard deviation of a population, uh, of a sample of the population. The population is all the students at Manchester University, and this is a sample. Consequently, we derive the standard deviation by dividing not by the whole of the number in the sample, but the number in the sample minus 1. So we should actually write 499. So we end up with 11.54427. Now if you use the Excel function, we need to be careful about which one we use. So if we've got equals, stdv is a function, it gives you options. So stdv.p calculates standard deviation based on the entire population. Now, as we said before, we haven't got the entire population, we have a sample. So, the other option, standard deviation.s, standard deviation based on a sample. So that's actually one it should use. If we just use stdv, that's from the previous version of Excel and it applies to a sample. That's what I'm most used to using, um, but in the latest version of Excel, it should actually be .s. Um, and then we need to enter the data set, which is from A4 to A503. And we 
get exactly the same number as the way you've calculated it, which is um, gratifying. So you can see exactly what we mean by standard deviation. Um, you can take the same cells and copy them. Square differences. <laughs> 